Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome each of you in attendance, as well as those of you who may be watching on City 7, to the July 24th meeting of the Independence Planning Commission. Before we begin our meeting, uh, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our meetings, it is the responsibility of this commission to hold public hearings and make recommendations to the city, the Independent City Council on matters relating to zoning and land use changes within the city. We also consider and make decisions on plats, special use permits, and other issues as well as changes in codes and policies that relate to city planning. Our procedure for each case is as follows. First, the applicant will be recognized to speak on behalf of their case, then followed by anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak in favor of the matter. And secondly, those who are in opposition or who have questions regarding the case will be recognized to speak. Then, if there was opposition or questions from the public, the applicant will be allowed a rebuttal period to address those concerns or questions. And once the applicant is finished, the chair will declare the public hearing portion of the case closed and further comment from the public will not be recognized. At that point, the commissioners will have opportunity to discuss the merits of the case with one another, and during that discussion, the commission reserves the right to ask questions of all parties concerned. Finally, the commission will render a decision in the case. Because this is the only public hearing of the case on the agenda tonight, all those who wish to, be, to speak will be heard. All comments and questions should be addressed to me, the chair, and not directly to the applicant or to the city staff. The chair also requests that statements be kept brief and on point, and that if a statement has already been made and you want to agree with it, then simply state that you agree with it. Now, to expedite tonight's meeting, the chair asks that anyone who wishes to testify on a case tonight or who thinks they may testify, please stand now and be sworn in. Those standing, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, is there any change to the agenda tonight? No, sir. The first item is a continued public hearing, case number 18-125-01, rezoning PUD 19700 East, 39th Place South. The city give the report. Hispanos Corporation. Oh. The Spanos Corporation requests to rezone the property located east of Jackson Drive and East uh, 39th Place South from R6 single family residential to R30 PUD high density residential plan unit development and approve a preliminary development plan. So we're looking at the vicinity map um, of the uh, Brian Brian hold on it's not coming through for some reason. hello okay I will start over again okay um, the Spanos Corporation requests to rezone property located east of Jackson Drive and 39th place south from R6 single family residential to R30 PUD high density residential plan unit development and approve a preliminary development plan. So the first slide here is the vicinity map for um, uh, the proposed apartment community be about a half a block northeast of um, or a block and a half northeast of uh, 
the intersection of East 40th Court South and um, Jackson Drive, just a little bit east of um, the Sonic Drive-In, if you know where that is. Uh, properties to the north, south, and east are zoned R6. <coughs> Uh, the property to the west is zoned uh, C2 General Commercial. Uh, the city's comprehensive plan envisions mixed uses for the area. Undeveloped tracks lie adjacent to the property, but the drive-in restaurant, the Sonic, uh, is off a little bit to the west. Uh, to the northwest, there's a hotel. To the south, we have a nursing home across Jackson Drive, and further to the west, over toward Independence Center, is an existing um, apartment community. Uh, the proposed 13.53 acre development will consist of 280 multifamily units in five four story, 56 unit buildings. Each residential building will have 19 attached garages for a total of 95 garages. There are 290, 299 parking spaces required, uh, which they exceed. Uh, amenities will include a 5,000 square foot clubhouse leasing facility with a salt water, water pool and spa, a fitness center, media center, lounge, game room, kitchen facility, exterior gathering areas, and the dog park. The elevations will have fiber cement siding fascia with 30-year asphalt single shingle roofs. Uh, the khaki and gray apartments will have interior entry. Uh, the clubhouse is uh, going to be a two stories in height uh, with a large balcony and uh, some storage areas. And that's the clubhouse. The preliminary development plan indicates 21 street trees, 15 parking lot interior trees, five parking lot perimeter trees, and 72 shrubs. But the final development plan will have to include in aisle trees and associated shrubs on the perimeter of the parking as well. A 15 foot wide landscape buffer and fence will be provided along the eastern edge of the property. The western edge of the property will not have the landscape buffer because of the grade. The northern portion of the track will be screened by the grade and the, wood, the wooded areas along the new um, north property line. Real quickly, I'll go through some of the pictures. So this is um, sort of at the south, you're at the southwest side of the site, actually looking more away from the site toward the neighboring properties to the west. Um, this is the site itself, this and a little bit farther east. And this is looking more east. Uh, this is looking back down 40th toward um, Jackson Drive to the south. And this is at that intersection to the south looking directly at those nursing home and assisted limiting facilities that are there to the south. Um, this is looking back north, back toward the property. This is looking east from near the hotel toward the property. Um, here's looking back over the left shoulder, my left shoulder at the hotel. And then this is back west toward the Independence Center in the uh, cornerstone apartments and this is the end of the street <laughs> the, and uh, the uh, look at the property again with a zoning sign um, staff recommends approval of the zoning request and the preliminary development plan subject to the following conditions Include the addresses listed in the staff report on the final plat and development plan. 
And number two, uh, the final development plan will have to include endile trees and associated shrubs on the perimeter of the parking lot. And I'm ready to take any questions you may have. This, I haven't been real observant on some of these uh, uh, new units that have been going up. Do we have another four-story apartment complex in the city? I think the um, senior apartments that are just north of the McDonald's over there off Valley View Parkway are four-story. Yeah, they're still under construction over there by the bike path, the okay. little, little blue trays. All right, thank you. Does anybody else have questions of city staff? If not, could the applicant please come forward? And state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Moore. I'm an attorney with White Goss Law Firm located in Kansas City, Missouri, here on behalf of the applicant, the Spanos Corporation. Um, we're not going to go through in great detail the, de the detail that uh, uh, has already been presented by the staff. Uh, we're certainly ready to respond to any questions that you may have. I would like to give a few brief in introductory remarks uh, about Spanos Corporation and the uh, proposed project and the reason for this particular location. Following me will be um, Pete Rosick, who's with Spanos Corporation, and he will describe in a little bit more detail about uh, the proposal. Uh, and we also have Chris Grady, who, who's with Gephardt uh, uh, Architects, who can go through some of the uh, design features. Okay. So. System failure. Well, well, they're figuring that out. Uh, um, the Spanos Corporation is a uh, large uh, multifamily uh, developer, uh, nationally recognized. Uh, they they um, develop high end. Uh, apartment uh, complexes throughout the country. Uh, currently, they've got uh, several developments here in the Kansas City area, and we have some photos of some of these developments that, uh, we can, that we'll be showing you um, that uh, give you a, a flavor of what you can expect with this development here in, in Independence. This is going to be the very first project that uh, Spanos Corporation has uh, undertaken in Independence, and in fact, I believe it's the first one in all of Jackson County. Um, this location uh, was chosen, there we go, so all these people are here, uh, and if the, only a couple are going to talk, uh, but the others are here. If there's need for a response from, uh, from the commission to uh, specific questions. So the location itself was chosen strategically because of its proximity to uh, the transportation system, the highways, uh, the, the proximity to the uh, Jackson County Little Blue Trace Park uh, as an amenity, the location and proximity to all of the existing retail that's in that area, as well as all of the restaurants that are, that are located in the that 39th Street corridor, and perhaps more importantly, because of its location to Center Point Hospital, uh, where uh, perhaps a lot of the tenants would, uh, would uh, come from. Again, the project itself, is, as Brian has already indicated, it's 280 units, it's five, five stories high, uh, or five buildings total, four stories high. We do have elevators in, in these um, uh, developments. Uh, with the with the clubhouse, the the spa, the fitness center, and the dog park, it comes with 
uh, a tremendous amount of, of amenities built into the development itself in addition to access to the amenities that I already mentioned uh, in the surrounding area. So that I think I'll pause here and let Pete get up and talk a little bit more about, uh, about the project um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. I'll probably come back after Chris is done just with a few brief uh, concluding remarks and then we'll be ready for any questions that you all may have or if you have them throughout the, the uh, proceeding, feel free to interrupt and ask. Thank you. Chairman, Commissioners, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. And staff, thank you for a wonderful report. I'll keep this brief. Um, let me tell you who and what we are. I'm Pete Rossick, as Bill indicated, a regional manager for Spanos Corporation. I'm in charge of Missouri, Kansas, and Colorado. We're, uh, our company is based in Stockton, California. We've been there and developing predominantly apartments for about 50 years. We're in Florida, Texas, the south and a lot of projects in, in California and we're currently in Portland. Here uh, we have a project we just completed uh, off Tom Watson Parkway and Highway 29. It was 291 units. Uh, as Bill indicated, it's we're really big on amenities. We have uh, this dog parks, gyms, and with the dog park, we, believe it or not, we have dog spas so you can take your dog let it go crazy in the park. You can bring it in, wash it, and then uh, everybody's happy. Uh, that will be included in this project as well. Um, one of the things he did touch on is on this property, the buildings will be four-story, and they'll be elevator served. And what we found out is that it's a big convenience for our renters, and we start seeing renters that come in from millennials all the way to retired people merely because the elevator makes things so much more convenient when you're not lugging three things up three flights of stairs. Heck, even your move-in costs are less because of the elevator. So we, we, we like that a lot. We have a, a nice big clubhouse with a fitness center. Uh, and again, the fitness center is nice enough where you don't need to go out and get a gym membership somewhere. He touched on a saltwater pool. It also has a sun deck and a spa. So we really amenitize our, our properties very well. Um, we're, our units are gonna run from 540 square feet to about 1,300 square feet, and I think that's gonna hit the market really well. Uh, we love this location merely because it, we feel it's walkable to the hospital and a lot of other uh, businesses in the area. Again, we're uh, excited about this, and furthermore, we have another project on, underway in Overland Park. It's 200 and... Uh, 89 units, it's right next to the Sprint Center, and it's again, it's a, this one's a five story. So the point is we're active in the area, and I think we've been, if I'm not uh, wrong, I think we've been in, in this market since 1985. So we're no, just, you know, we're just not newcomers. So um, I'll turn it back to Bill. If you have any other questions, please let us know. Thank you. Um, at this time, I think Chris Grady would like to come up and talk a little bit about the, the project itself and, and its layout. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be available for questions. Okay, he'll be available for questions. Well, in that case, I am going to run through a few of the slides just to kind of give you a, a sense of, of what, uh, what you can expect with this development. So these are actual photos of actual projects that they've developed. Um, are they all here in the Kansas City market? Yes, yes, okay, so these are, are in their Kansas City market. Uh, and you can see that all of, all of the, the, the amenities and the landscaping is all very nicely done. Um, photos of the fitness center, uh, I've seen one before, uh, never been in it. Um, and here are some, some more of the exterior photos. I believe one of these is the dog park, uh, and some of the other, the pool and some of the other amenities that, again, would come into this project when, when they uh, begin construction. Uh, this is a representation of the, of the building that uh, will be built. Uh, again, it'll be one of five. 
Uh, and then finally, we're back to the front page. We have, we have other detail behind this, but uh, we'll save that in case there are any uh, specific questions and we can, um, we can re refer to those. Those are actually the details that you already have in your, in your packet of the plans. A uh, couple of things I want to point out with respect to this uh, project, and, and I think Pete alluded to it, but the, uh, with these amenities and this type of development, this is a market rate housing project. Um, and I think that's important to emphasize. They believe that they have the ability to come in and put this kind of a, a project in with this level of amenities and get the rents out that will make it work. Uh, and I think we're excited to, to see this coming to, to our community. Uh, one of the other things to mention is that this is uh, about 14 acres. There's probably another 15 or 16 acres uh, that's, that's, own, that's also owned by the, 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 the community of Christchurch, uh, available for development. And with this property going in and putting the infrastructure in that, is, that they're going to be required to put in, it will now make that property developable. For example, the sanitary sewer is, it has to be brought in from uh, the Little Blue Parkway. So it's coming in from the east and bringing it all the way across the vacant property to, the, to serve this property on the, on the west end of, of the entire vacant area. So that makes that uh, all the more developable uh, when, and, when and if there's a, a, a party to come along that's willing to, to undertake that project. In addition, there will be a couple of other pad sites that will be left available for the owner to develop um, at some time in the future. And they're also finally bringing in some, you know, the public road system into the project to make it uh, developable, which again, just makes that, brings that on and makes it ready for that next property to become developed. Um, I think the only other thing I want to want to mention is uh, Brian mentioned that there were some conditions on the the approval, and we are uh, perfectly willing to to comply with those. Those being the addresses on the buildings and the landscaping at the kind of the end of the aisles and in the, of the parking area, and we'll, we're more than happy to include those in the final development plan. With that, I think I'll close uh, respectfully requesting your, uh, your consent and approval to this uh, proposal. Does anyone have questions of Bill? I just have a question because I don't n understand, so I just want to understand. But on storm, on the storm water, what does B in lieu of detention mean? Okay. It, it, because it's because of the proximity to uh, the Little Blue, uh, it's so close to the Little Blue. Rather than building uh, on-site stormwater detention, the, the 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 concept here is get the water into the into the river as quickly as possible to let it flow down, rather than to hold it. And so, therefore, rather than than being required to build on-site um, stormwater, they have to make a payment in lieu of uh, that is paid to the city. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's a one-time payment, or? We would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream, huh? Okay. Uh, I confess this is an impressive project, an impressive presentation. My thoughts and concerns rest on down the road. Tell me about what your project looks like after 30 years. My concern is it's beautiful today. Will it become a cash cow in 30 years? And what will this project look like in 30 years? And what will its impact be in 30 years? Fair, Help me out, Counselor. Fair question, Commissioner. Um, Again, my clients are, are um, developers and owners of the, of the projects that they build. So they'll be here managing this project and they will continue to manage it and keep it in the same pristine condition that it is in today. It's, you're not going to see something that 
30 years from now is, is going to be an eyesore. I think you've been in the market since 1985. Do you have any pictures of the project from 1985? We don't have any loaded, no, but um, I, I, we could certainly share some with, with the staff, but uh, again, they, they own and manage the properties on a long-term basis. And they have retained ownership of all the properties they don't sell to other owners after a certain amount of time? Or Pete, do you want to answer that? Sure. Uh, this particular property, we will, well, let me back up a little bit. We're developers, we're general contractors, we're managers, and we're owners. So we do it all within the house. Yes, we have sold probably a lion's share of our properties, uh, but there's a handful that we, for different reasons, we keep, manage, and maintain for ourselves. This will be one of them. Um, Jennifer, with our company, has been here since the mid-'80s and has a laundry list of properties that we've developed in the Corbin Crossing area um, in Overland Park. Um, I believe it was the original purchase was 1,700 acres, of which we sold some off and then built a variety of properties that you could drive by right now and they're they're beautiful they're maintained well um, they're landscaped well and and <laughs> compared to my stuff out west it's easy to maintain things here everything grows you put it on the ground it, it it's wonderful but no we will we will maintain it and we will own it does this uh does this uh, landscape is going to be supported by a in-ground sprinkler system of course Okay. And it's designed by a landscape architect, registered here, okay. and uh, all of our properties are. And we will have a landscape maintenance company do what they do every week. Um, I would like you to see our project that we did up on, on 45th. It's absolutely magnificent. You, you can, it's landscapes beyond, beyond belief. It's beautiful. Do you have some pictures? Yes, we did, and you saw some of those. Um, mm -hmm. well, let's take a look. That right there is the back side of our clubhouse, which goes out into a grassy area. Isn't this the proposed? Nope, this one's actually standing. This is the one on 45th. Bill? Yep. Uh, it, Counselor, it, it, I think you presented that as a rendition of what is coming. A representation. A representation of what is coming. But could, well, it's a very similar to the building. The new building will look a little different in the elevation, but this one is built. It's standing there, and you can see how large the trees are that's around the pool, and, and that's not a joke. You, I'll take you there right now. They're that size. To the right side of the picture, the trellised area is a hammock garden. Mm -hmm. So there's two hammocks side by side, and then where I'm standing is, it, is at the pool deck, and the pool is right here in spa, and the clubhouse is behind me. And the open grass area is just for, they take the, what are those things called? The corn, what are they? whole things out there on the lawn and they play with that but that pretty much is a, is a good picture of what we build um, this also if I were to take that previous picture and turn to the right the picture on the bottom left shows you the pool there those are the hammock gardens there that's a tot lot that we installed and that's the entrance to the haven which is the one up on uh, uh, Shoal Creek we finished that last year and again you can see how extensive the landscaping is you can see how well it's maintained well, Jim's a Jim. That right there on the bottom left is a dog park. It's about an acre. Our, this proposal would be a little smaller than that, really because we just don't have the land. On the right is a fire pit, um, and it's the same project. And again, you can look beyond the pool, and you can see the same architecture on the building. The area to the left is a covered patio for barbecues and cooking. And again, top left is our entry. And again, you can see how well and, and, and nice it's landscaped. Um, that's really all the pictures that we brought with us. What's a cement siding? <laughs> so in, in other words, you know, I know there can be many different types of veneer put on a building. I just wondered what was it's, planned it's a, for it's this a, one. It's a cement product made into siding. It comes in different sizes. Okay. And what our architect does is he takes bigger pieces and narrower pieces to augment the look of the of the project. Also, it has, let me go to it. Okay. 
it has. So you can see on this elevation, the areas that on the top are a different color and they're also a different size of siding. As you come down, we use a narrower siding and it's uh, made by James Hardy Company. Um, it's impervious to just about anything. And uh, how, what do you anticipate the rent structure? Um, our smallest units will probably start right around seven to 750. And our largest units would probably be about 1600, 1650. That puts us about even, or a little, right about even with Lee's Summit, which I think that at the end of this day, uh, from what I've seen over there, our project will rival anything that they're doing. So I think that we'll do well there. And are there, uh, you said, from, uh, the report said from single bedroom to three bedroom houses. How are, are those spread throughout the same units or? Yeah, what we do is we, we, do, we do a nice unit mix. We'll even have, probably have some smaller studios. Um, that would be the 540 and then all the way up to the three bedroom. Um, mostly single one, one bedrooms and, and two bedrooms will dominate the property. And again, like I said, it, 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 we'll usually stack the three bedrooms on the ends because we'll give them the most glass and the most views because we'll get the highest rents for those. So that's usually our nicest unit. And uh, Chris with Kephart, they're very good about giving us a lot of light, a lot of natural light, a lot of glass. And it really, uh, actually, it's kind of depicted on this. If you look at the ends of the units, there are the windows wrap around the corner and it just, with a lot of natural light, really makes the unit nice. Okay. Uh, our finishes are gonna be, we'll have uh, granite countertops, We'll have uh, complete appliance package, including every single unit has a full-size washer and dryer, um, not just the hookups. Um, we use a vinyl plank flooring throughout and just carpet in the bedrooms. And we found that people like that a lot better than just having the carpet thrown out through everywhere. Um, we find the units wear better that way. Um, so it's a, a very high end, it'll be a class A property. This will be an open access or a gated community. It'll be an open access. One other thing we touched upon is the buildings are four story and the front side have a tuck under garage. Mm -hmm. If a resident elects to rent that garage, you can pull into your garage and there's a garage door that opens you into an enclosed corridor. So you, you know, in essence, if it's raining or snowing, you just pull into your garage and you're in a conditioned space. Right, take you right, you just go to the elevator, take you to your unit, which we find um, well, in the, in, the, in the Western and Colorado climate, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. I'm sure it would be here as well, summer or winter. And you said your intentions as owner, contractor, developer, manager, is to continue the continuity of that in this package, in this particular property, into the foreseeable future of some approximate how many years? Um, I'm gonna say, for me, probably 15 years, because uh, I think that's about as far as I'm gonna go, but uh, hopefully hopefully longer. But um, I know that we um, have started a program throughout the country where we're developing markets and keeping a lot of the product. And we're doing that for another uh, cash form of cash revenue. So this is one that's earmarked for that. I have one, another one in Denver by the, the Denver airport we have another one in Sanford, Florida. And we're, we're adding more to the portfolio as we go. So the likely successor would be you would convert to a condominium? No. Um, you know, when I first, I've been with this company since 96, and, and I remember Mr. Spanos, Alex, I, I, I picked him up from the airport, and I asked him that particular question. I said, why don't we build condos? He said, do you want one owner or 300 owners? Got it, clearly. We, we've never built condos, never will. We've dabbled in some office building. We built our office space in uh, our office building and complex in, uh, in Stockton, but primarily 100% apartments. Okay, are there any other questions? Are these conducive? people to have children here? Absolutely, um, and that's primarily why we provide a, an offer a three bedroom, um, a three bedroom product. So we have, um, 
that was a three bedroom, two bath, and we put a shower and tub, and, a shower in one bath and a tub in another, merely because uh, we've been told that, you know, people with family, the kids want to need a tub. So it's, it is, but a three bedroom is a family unit. I saw the playground equipment, and I thought, well, maybe that's for grandchildren. Yes, it could be. It very well could be. And, it, you know, it gets used, which is, which is great. And uh, all, the, all, all the amenities get used. It's, it's great to see, uh, like I said, the project up north, you know, you, you, you put your heart and your soul in these things, and then you go out there and you actually see people using them, and it's great. It really is. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone here who is opposed or has questions? Okay. The public hearing portion is closed. Commissioners, have any questions of staff or comments? I have a comment. Okay. Um, one of the things that impresses me about this project is it goes along with what we've been studying to become a city for all ages mm -hmm. for the last two months or whatever we've been doing. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I think that that is a good start to that, mm -hmm. you know, to say, yeah, we're on board. So. Cool. Very good observation. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. Okay. Uh, I'm ready for either more questions, comments, or a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that we approve case number 18-125-01, rezoning the PUD preliminary development plan east of east of South Jackson Drive and East 39th Street Place. Street South. Sorry. What? Recommendation. Recommend, including the recommendation. Do I have to read those recommendations? No. Thank you. And there is a recommendation that's in there that's not in under the recommendations about the trash enclosure. Correct? I second that motion, Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, you guys were with it. I'm just saying, there is, there is one in there about a trash enclosure. A masonry trash enclosure will need to be provided for the project trash compactor to be sited northeast of Building that, Two. Yeah, that's the standard requirement with the permit. Okay. It to be for the trash compactor that they will provide. Right. I'm just pointing it out. Okay. Well, it's been moved and seconded. With the recommendations. So we're ready for the vote. Commissioner Ferguson. Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry. Yes. Commissioner Preston. Yes. Commissioner Wiley. Yes. Commissioner McLean. Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh. Yes. Case number 18-125-01, rezoning PUD for 19700 East 39th Street Place South has been approved. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next thing we have on our agenda is a consent item, case number 18-320-03, final plat, Varese Vale, PUD, 13th plat. Four years Vale. How do you say that again? Four he's Vale. Four he's, just like it's written. Okay, thank you. Four he's. <laughs> Four. Um, I can't remember what we do. We just vote. We just say. Somebody makes motion and a second, and then you vote. Okay, motion, please. Mr. Nobody. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve case number eighteen dash three two zero dash zero three. For Hasey Vale, I don't know how to say it. PUD 13th Platt. We have a second. <coughs> second. Virginia seconds. Ready for the vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? 
Yes. Case number 18-320-03, final plant, Voorhees, Vail, PUD, 13th plat, has been approved. Next item on our agenda is case number 18-100-13, rezoning of 1208 and 1210 East, US 24 Highway. Yes, so Mark Cosgrove requests the rezone part of the property at 1210 East, U.S. 24 Highway from 01, which is office residential, to C2, general commercial, and obtain a special use permit for used vehicle sales for the entire site. This vicinity map, as you can see on the screen there, shows the general location of the site, which is on the north and west, depends on what you, how you want to categorize that, side of a U.S. 24 Highway. This is the zoning for the area. The small portion zoned 01 is noticeable, it's sort of a pink, tannish color there, uh, as all other properties along the frontage of the highway here are zoned C2. Properties behind the street frontage of the highway are zoned R6 single family. In this aerial photograph, the zoning portion of the applicant's property is only where the recently demolished building, residential building was sited on the front part of the site. Most of the Eagles Lodge building is zoned C2 along with the property behind and the parking area, parking display area, I guess you call it, to the east. Uh, this aerial photo was provided by the applicant and provides further information on the layout of the site. The X marks the spot where the residential building has already been demolished. The former lodge will feature, building will feature an office on the south end of the building with a shop cleanup area on the north end. Vehicles will be displayed in the parking area on the east side of the site. Here we're at the drive entrance, looking into the site from the, to the north into the site and showing the lodge building. It's sort of a depressed building, uh, earth contact sort of. This is the east side of the building, uh, showing the entrance. This is the north end of the building where the lodge had an outdoor area. This end of the building will have a garage door installed for vehicle maintenance and cleanup. Here we're deeper into the site looking back towards the lodge building. This gravel area, if used for the parking and or storage of vehicles, must be paved. And then we have a couple photos of the parking lot display area where vehicles will be. And this is a uh, small commercial building north or east of this uh, applicant site. Here we're looking northeast up 24 highway at the assortment of commercial uses. And then across the uh, highway is a small offset building and then some vacant property. And here we're looking southwest down US 24 highway. And this uh, last photo is a uh, small commercial building adjoining the applicant's property on the south. I think this used to be a, a Dog and Suds or something. It was a little drive through restaurant. Does anybody remember that? Okay. Anyway. Is there uh, anything in there now? Uh, it's vacant right now. Yeah, there used to be a canopy and, and stuff, and I think they took all that down. As the application encompasses two different component, rezoning for the small portion of the lot, in the special use permit for the entire property, the Planning Commission should take action on the rezoning request first and then vote on the special use permit portion after a separate action. Staff recommends approval of the rezoning portion of this application. For the special use permit, staff recommends approval with the following conditions. All parking display areas shall be paved with an all-weather surface. This would include the existing gravel area north and east of the building if this area will be used for the parking or display storage of vehicles. And depending on the amount of pavement, a permit may be required. Uh, and then number two is pertaining to detailing of cars inside the garage. Water pollution control states that if a floor drain is present in the space, the drains will be required to be connected to a solid separator and if the mechanical work is conducted, then an oil sand separator is needed. The other option would be to abandon the floor drains. 
If the car washing is to be conducted outside, no soap or detergents can be used. WPC would prefer the car washing to be conducted inside the building so wash water can be sent to the sanitary sewer. Three is any site lighting added to the property must meet the standards of city code section 14508. Number four is the ADA parking spaces need to be updated to reflect the current city and national standards for marking and signage. And five is four street trees shall be planted along the property's frontage on 24 highway. And then the last is all conditions must be completed prior to the city to a city business license being approved for the business. Thank you, Stuart. Will the applicant come forward, please, and state your name and address for the record. Uh, Mark Cosgrove, 4822 Northeast Pebble Beach, Lee Summit, Missouri. Okay. Um, I know we've all read this, but if you could just give us a, a little background on I'm sp uh, what you've done in the past and kind of what your intentions are for this and if you're deciding if you're going to work on cars or just sell them or what you're going to do okay well, well uh, currently where i'm at now i've been there be april will be 30 years excuse me mr Consgrove. can you move the microphone a little bit closer to you there oh okay Thanks. but anyway currently where i'm at right now i've been there 30 years so um looking at this property due to i've had flooding issues where i'm at now and we don't do any type of mechanical work. We send it all out. The only thing we will do on site is clean up, you know, get the cars ready. And we don't have motors, parts, anything like that. We sell whole cars. Okay. All right. And you, you're, uh, I'm sure you've been told about if all this passes, what they what the city wants you to do and you're amenable to doing yes to doing those items right. okay um could i just ask Stuart, just a real quick question how much pavement does one have to do to need a permit well it's over uh, so many square feet and i can't remember right offhand it's like five or six spaces equivalent to but i can't remember exactly what the square footage is right offhand okay do you, are you planning on making it, expanding the, the pavement uh, yes, area? The, the property used to have an old house in front of it. Yes. And they tore it down. I, I'm wanting to asphalt that area right mm -hmm. there to expand the frontage on the highway. Hmm. Okay. All right. Does anyone have questions of Mr. Cosgrove? So you do own this piece of property that was I'm sorry, I can't. You do own the piece of property that was demolished with the X on it. No, no. Uh, the, the property I'm buying, the, the, the Eagles Club, I assume, or whoever, I, I think it's bank owned now, they had the house removed where, where I'm at now. Yes, it's all part of the same property. Okay, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, on that number three, it's about the site lighting. What lighting are you thinking about using? What for lighting? Light for the LED. Process? I know. But <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Because I know so you have to light the cars at night. Right. So there, currently, there's two b big poles on the back of the property. I haven't seen it at night on how much that lights, but just, I don't know. You know, put lights on a pole LED, you know. I mean, I won't blind cars go down the highway or nothing, just for security reasons, because we close at 6 every night, so. So we don't really need a lot of lighting other than for security. Right. Yeah, I just don't know if you've given some thought as to what type of lights you're going to put in or how tall or any the, of that. Oh. I mean, like normal street light? No, not that tall, probably. Something like his unusual car lot. Right. Yeah, you know, probably, what, 20 feet, I guess. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any, other, any other commissioners have questions? Mr. Cosgrove. In regards to item number two, I know you stated you're going to sell whole cars. You're not going to do mechanic work. Right. But you're going to D 
detail, the cars will come in. Will they be detailed somewhere else, or you intend to detail them on site? And we detail them on site. Okay. Do you intend to put in the drainage, sanitary, catch basins, et cetera? Or? Yes, I do. Okay, I think that's it. That it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone here who is opposed or has questions? Seeing no movement in the crowd, I'll declare this public hearing portion is closed and would look to my fellow commissioners to either provide comments. Question to staff. I'm looking here, mailings went out to some approximately 28 uh, neighbor, neighbors to that property. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I didn't I haven't really looked at it, but that's what uh, the, if that's what the county is on the sheet. Yeah, it's, a, it's an approximate count. I'm just taking that there's nobody here in favor or opposed. And I, I take it that these did go out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually on this case, I wrote the letters I, and, uh, and Miranda, our admin, uh, she, she mailed them and uh, had this you know, owner, this mailing affidavit taken care of, so. And then I posted the property with the sign. But this is the commercial property that's been that way forever, and mm -hmm. they're not really making a, a change, significant change to it. Cool. So I'm, I'm not really that surprised that no one showed up. I have a question, gentlemen. Do we really need another used car vehicle lot? in independence is that a question for me it's not a new one huh it's not a new one it's what it, 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 it's, this is a movement of a oh, okay. existing I business to a better site i, gotcha. I take it right. i approve that's okay, okay. That yeah okay well that is a question for later maybe but <laughs> anyway we, I, I don't know, I, are we shooting to be the used car capital of Missouri or something? But anyway, um, I do appreciate that because that is a bad spot where he's at and it's flooded several times and he's been there a long time so I'm happy to see him actually move over there. And, um, Either that or sell boats. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready for some kind of motion or to rezone first, right? And yeah. then, or, okay. Yes. Correct. I guess it's you now. It's there. <laughs> yes. I move to approve case number, case-18-100-13, rezoning of 11210 East US 24 Highway from office residential, sorry, Z-1, 0 one in to general commercial C-2. Okay. There's a bullet point. <laughs> I second. Cindy move, Virginia second. Ready for vote? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? No. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Commissioner uh, Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 18-100-13, rezoning of 1210 East US 24 Highway from office residential to general commercial C2 has been approved. Uh, the next case, 18200-04, special use permit for the same address is on the table. Mr. Chair, I move what a surprise! To, Thank you. 
I move to approve case number 18-200-04 for special use permit for the property at 1210 East US 24 Highway. Thank you, Ms. McLean. Do I have a second? Second. Very predictable, yes. <laughs> We're ready. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? No. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 18-200-04, a special use permit for 1210 East US 24 Highway has been approved. Thank you and good luck. Case number 18-400-03, home business at 3101 South Shrank Road. Can the city have the report? Can we have the report, please? Yeah, but before I uh, go into the report, um, I'll point out on the first slide here that that was an error. It says uh, used car sales. That was from the previous <laughs> slide pre presentation. So this is the, the home business at the church. Um, Daniel Brett uh, Hedrick um, seeks to operate a home business from uh, Glenview Baptist Church at 3101 South Shrank Road to teach firearms safety and instruction. So this is um, the vicinity map, basically um, just uh, south of where uh, Shrank um, uh, goes into the uh, frontage road that's down below 291. Properties to the northeast of this site are zone R18 PUD, moderate density residential planned unit development. Properties to the south and west are zoned R6 single family residential. Townhouses and apartments lie to the north and to the east. Single family residences to the west, and there's a vacant track uh, to the south. The business's uh, classroom instruction will include videos, worksheets, uh, and firearm safety and uh, maintenance materials and tools. No actual firearms or live ammunition will be permitted on the site. The applicant will teach five clients at a time. Two days of instructions will consist of eight hour classes on site and a four hour class at the firing range up on Truman Road Crossfire. The church has uh, parking to accommodate 30 cars. And the site has been inspected and approved by the city's fire department and the building inspection division of community development. Real quickly, I'll do a tour of the neighborhood. This is looking directly east across Shrank at the church. This is looking south down Shrank. And this is, um, looking the opposite direction from the church to the west to the residential neighborhood. This is back up Shrank going toward 291. Uh, this is um, the um, parking lot south of the church. Uh, this is the backside of the church, the drive that goes around and the tree line that separates it from the, part of, from the apartment project that lies further to the east. And this is looking back to the east on the north side of the building at the drive that comes back out to Shrink. Um, staff recommends approval of, of the home business permit subject to the following conditions. Number one, the business shall operate only between the hours of 8 a.m. through 10 p.m. And number two, uh, no actual firearms or live ammunition will be permitted on the site and I'm ready to take any questions you may have. Point of clarification. I keep hearing home business and I keep hearing church. Which is it? 
Well, if you recall, we amended the home business regulations from thinking early this year, or late last fall, to allow for home businesses in places of religious assembly to be called home businesses. This is the first one of these that we've had. Oh, thank you. I suppose it's God's home. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any questions? Would the applicant please come forward and state your name and uh, address for the record, please? Uh, where you live. Unless you, unless My name is Brad Hedrick. I live at 30, uh, 3033 South Linwood. It's about 30 seconds from the church. Okay, thank you. Just tell us a little bit about uh, what your plans are and what you're doing, please. Um, well, I've I've been I've been around guns all my life. I've been sh shooting guns through hunting and recreation for about the last forty years. Earl, uh, I I would suppose it was last early the, earlier this year or last year they changed the the laws in Missouri where it's it's a permitless concealed carry nowadays. You get so many people out there that'll buy a gun. First thing out of their mouth is who teaches concealed carry so I can get my permit. They don't know how to clean it, they don't know how to load it, and they don't know how to safely carry it or shoot it. My job would be to teach them the proper ways to clean them, to carry them, and when it's legal and not legal, to, to actually pull it out. There are so many people that, that will pull it out to scare somebody they don't realize that that's breaking the law. These people need to be educated, and that's what I want to do. <coughs> the reason I'm holding it at the church is, luckily the church, the, the basement of the church, our fellowship hall is big enough that, that it, can, it can accommodate um, me demonstrating the proper grip, how to avoid a, a, a confrontation without reaching for your gun. Just avoid it. The best way to not have to use it is to just avoid the, the situation. That's my job. Okay. And I'm sure you've been doing this for a while, but you could tell us a little bit about your qualifications or. Well, I'm I'm an NRA uh, certified pistol instructor. I got that certification last year. Okay. Um, unofficially, I've been teaching people the, the proper way to, to to fire a gun most of my adult life since I was about 20. A lot of times, I got my certification simply because a lot of times, if, especially if you're in a range, somebody will be doing something extremely dangerous to the people in the range. And somebody that's just there and offers some advice, people don't listen to. If I take out my certification and say, I'm a pistol instructor, I'm a firearms instructor, and what you're doing is going to get these 10 people hurt, they'll listen to me because I know what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone else have, does anyone have questions of Mr. Hedrick? You've got uh, up to five persons at a time in a yes, class. Sir. And you will be showing those five at the church how to clean the weapon? Um, I will show them, I will demonstrate through, through photographs and videos the proper ways to take the gun apart, clean it. Once I take them to the range and actually let them shoot a gun, I will physically show them how to take the gun apart, clean it, put it back together, and safely store it. Okay. So at the church, it'll be strictly videos. There will be no strictly videos, uh, worksheets, and um, training pistols, which they are just simply pieces of plastic. They they resemble a firearm. There is no working parts, and and anybody that comes to the church for that instruction will not be al allowed to bring their firearm. If they bring their firearm, I'll, I will ask them to go home. I've been asked by my congregation, because I'm a member of that church, my, my pastor and the congregation have requested that I don't bring my pistol on in the church, even though I'm kind of sort of the unofficial security guard because I live 30 seconds away. I, I go around the church daily. But they've asked me that I don't bring my pistol in the church. I respect that, and I don't do it. Is the congregation in support of you doing the classes there? Um, I have spoke to probably 75% of them. They have no problem with it. 
Um, the, the other ones, I just haven't brung it up, to be honest with you. I have spoke to the pastor and the deacons, and the deacons and the pastor don't see, have a problem with it. As a matter of fact, they're, they're, they're actually glad that I, that, that I take the time to go around the church to check the security, check the doors, do a walk through to the church. Because, you know, a lot of people work during the day. If I'm at home, I'll go do it. If I'm driving past the church, I'll take a minute, stop, and walk in. I look at it this way. That's my church. It's like my home. No other questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hedrick. You can, you can return to your seat. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. Is anyone else here in favor of this case? Is anyone here opposed or has questions? Public hearing portion is closed. Now, I have a question. I like what you're doing, but I've got a question, <laughs> okay? So it's not a criticism. Um, my question is, he's getting this permit, it's, it's in his name. It's not the church's name, right? Mm -hmm. So if down the road, not that because he does anything or anything, but these other 25% of the people get kind of upset and the church says, we change our mind, I mean, is the permit going with him, or is it going with the church, or, or where is it going? No, home businesses don't transfer to another location or another person. So it's actually, he could go to a he's got the location. permit, but it's in the church's Well, it's name. just like you would rent an apartment or rent a, a house and then run some business out of it. He would have to get approval of the uh, property owner, which I believe he has in this case, signature of the, uh, the church uh, pastor um, but if it uh, the church says uh, no you can't do it in here you just can't move it somewhere else if you did move it to another residential location or church he'd have to come back through here or he can move to a commercial location and he could just operate but but home businesses they are issued to a certain person at a certain location they don't just transfer around like uh, another type of business well but you can yeah but you can see my where my mm -hmm. question is going because if so if somebody is renting and the person who owns the house is does he have to be aware of that that's going a home business going at home because when the guy applies does he have to say who owns the house well we're supposed to get uh, either a letter from the owner saying it's okay for the applicant to uh, apply for a home business or uh, have the uh, landowner sign the application. And okay. I believe that's what happened in this case. Okay. It's not really any different than, than the uh, apartment complex. I'm sure they haven't bought it yet, but they have a contingency contract. So they can proceed. Okay. Well, I just, you know, I just wondered. So down the road, this application is valid for a year? It has to be reapplied well, or is no, valid for the it, rest of his life? Business license is good for a year and he has to renew that annually but the home business approval stays valid as long as business stays there and he follows the same standards that he was approved by the planning commission for i'm sorry say it again please. well any conditions that that the planning commission put on this application as long as he continued to follow those and follow the city standards of the city code there's no change to it if he wanted to so, so in other words, it's like every other business. He gets a he gets a, a renewal notice and yeah, they they send out uh, license renewals every year, and uh, he has to renew that to business licensing. Okay, and so you wouldn't know any different unless unless we he had a told you or somebody yeah complained. Okay. That's right. All right, well, I guess I can live with that. Anybody else have questions? If I necessarily have a question, I just it just feels odd to be deciding that this falls under us. I don't know why, but it does feel odd. I mean, I'm, there, there's this part of me that is like, does the church really understand the liability of this? 
so there's this mother part of me that wants to protect them, yeah. which really has hold on, really hold, just hold on a sec. I'll, I'll give you a chance. So, I don't know. Let's I wish there was someone here from the church. I think that's where I'm. I feel like there's not quite enough information. Did me. Did you get a letter from the church? Or did you get permission from the actual written permission from the pastor or whoever? While he's looking for that, sir, come come back up to the microphone again, and just kind of tell us how your how the church is set up. Who's is just the pastor in charge, or is like a board in charge? Or? There's a, there's a pastor, and we have a set of deacons. Okay. The the application that Stewart had me print off and sign, it has a place for the pastor to sign along with his. With the, with the church number and his his contact information. Okay. I asked him specifically, does he does he agree to it? Um, he had no problem with it, and that's when he filled it out. the The insurance issue is kind of sort of moot because I I formed an, a, a legal LLC. I'm going to get a get an insurance policy for my business, so my customers or my clients will be working un with my business. So the, the insurance to the church will never come into play. I will not put my church in that position. If something happens, which it will not, I will be responsible for it, and my insurance will, will cover it. My, I will not put my church in that position. I strictly want to use that, the, the space in the basement, and that's, that's all I'm going to do. And as far as my pastor, the deacons, and the, the congregation members that I have spoken to, as far as they're concerned, it's fine. And a lot of them made it very clear they, they did not want me to bring any fire, working firearm in the church. I assured them, and I will not break that word, no firearms will go in my church. Well, th uh, thanks for clearing that up. I think that's, and again, it's not, it's not you specifically. It's just oh, this I is understand. kind of a new thing for us, and we're just trying to, to ask questions. To be me. honest with you, I ran a window cleaning company in, in this city for 20 years. For 20 years, I'd get an app, application renewal. I'd send it in with my payment, and they'd send me back my, my, my occupational license. I was done. When I heard about this thing, it was kind of like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was really confused. Yeah. But they said I needed to do it. I got the paperwork, and I did it. Well, we appreciate that. Thank but you. Thank you for your time. Sure. Am I done, or does somebody else have another question? Uh, just have another seat, and we'll see how this plays out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Question to staff. The signed application. Yes. With the pastor's signature, you have that? Yes, I do. Okay. Is it notarized? We don't is require it notarization required? of our applications. Really? <laughs> no, we don't. Can I make a recommendation that, that maybe that happened that in the future? I mean, just, just saying. <laughs> Charlie, you got that right. You got that in the minutes? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I know, it's just another piece of paper, another thing you got to do, I know, but still. In this litigious era, I think that might be a good idea. Okay, any. Any discussion we need to be on here? Or you guys okay? Billy? Billy, are you, you okay? I'm just, you, you're just pondering something. I can see you. Like, I think I'd feel better if the congregation was here. But that, I, other than that, I, I don't even know what to ask. This is all new territory. I have a question. After the classes that you give and the training out at the firing range, what will they be qualified for? Um, to be honest with you, I will give them a certification of completion that they have learned the things that I have taught them, which are the things that I learned through the, NR, the NRA. Um, other than that, they will, won't, they will not be certified or qualified legally for gun. anything. They will, they, they will, in their own mind, they will know how to operate their gun. They will know how to clean their gun. They will know the, sa the, 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 the proper steps to safely store that gun. From there, it's gonna be up to them to actually do it. So they'll know 
that this is not my concealed carry. Exactly. I, I will make it extremely clear. I do not teach concealed carry for the simple fact that I want people to learn to properly handle their guns first and before they get the concealed carry. People will pay for this? Believe it or not, yes, they will. How do they find you? Are you? Do you have a website or? I have a website, I have business cards, I have a membership at the range. I meet a lot of potential clients at the range because I will see somebody doing something wrong. I will offer my assistance to give them a tip so they don't hurt themselves. If I could give an example, I, w I would be more than happy to if you all wouldn't, wouldn't mind me giving you an example. Um, about two months ago, I was at the range and the way it is, the, the, firing, the firing line is like where you guys are and back behind where, I, like where I'm at is where you load your, your, your magazines and the pistol. There was a woman with a 12 gauge shotgun at the firing line. She racked the slide, aimed down range and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. She did the same thing again, nothing happened. She turned around, aimed the 12-gauge shotgun at a concrete floor, racked the slide with me directly in front of her, and pulled the trigger. If that 12-gauge would have been loaded, I'd be dead. I simply walked over. I said, ma'am, please never do that again. The muzzle of that, that firearm goes downrange. If it's not downrange, it's in a case. She got a little upset that I offered my, my assistance. But in the same respect, she risked my life. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay. I hesitate to ask you to sit down. I just want to make sure if there's any other questions. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm about as confused as you guys seem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well. Is there such a thing as a, as a try it and see to business license, like a temporary type? Well, yeah, but if, I don't know, there's no, there's no f bullets, no real guns, no nothing, right? No nothing. And I will assure the, the, the commission that if, if my, the, my congregation ever came to me and asked me to stop doing it, they wouldn't need to ask twice. I just would quit. Yeah, I think you're that kind of guy. Yeah. But, there, but you said there's plastic guns. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, they're, 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 they're solid plastic uh, imitation guns. There's no working parts on them. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sure if you have more questions, fine. If you're ready to take a vote, I'll need a motion, but. I'll answer any question anybody has. Okay, well, we'll see. I'm just kind of waiting to feel the crowd out here. What do you, I mean, you gonna let Cindy do it again or what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell you what, go ahead and sit down. I think we're ready to vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair. Yes, Billy. In the matter of case number 18-400-03, home business permit at 3101 South Shrank, I recommend uh, approval. Okay, thank you, Billy. With the, as stated in the, with the, recommendation. the recommendations of operating hours. Okay, thank you, Billy. With, with conditions. With, with the, the two conditions. With the stated conditions. Yeah. Two conditions? Yeah, I read a second condition that wasn't on the um, I'm sorry, you did. On Thank the report. you. All right. I second. Virginia seconds. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? No. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean. No. Chairman Ashball. Well, since my vote doesn't matter, I'd say yes. I don't want to dead. I well, I don't want to deadlock this. I think I'm, I'm going to go out on faith and uh, trust this guy knows what he's doing. So, case number. 18-400-03 home business permit at 3101 South Shrank Road has been approved. 
And I really think you ought to get notarized signatures. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, We have approval of minutes next. And there are two sets of minutes. I'm sorry, yes. Yes, sir, you're free to go. Thank you very much. Don't let us down, sir. Don't let us down. Please. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't let us down. Believe me, I, if, I, if I let you all down, I would let my, my church family down first. That's never going to happen. Good to hear. Thank you very much. You all have a good night. You too. Uh, approval of minutes. If anybody have any corrections or comments, got two sets. I don't hear anything, so we'll say both minutes stand approved as written. Um, Any questions for commissioners? Uh, For the staff, I mean, from the commissioners? Nope. Okay. Sorry, I get the special time. We stand adjourned at 7.25 p.m.